I decided to try, I'm going to attempt to reactivate this YouTube channel that I've let go mostly stagnant uh, over the last couple of years. There's a couple different reasons for it going mostly stagnant, one of which is during the peak of my YouTube productivity, I was single, I was living alone, and I had a lot of free time on my hands. I don't know how I had free time on my hands, but I did. When I started producing videos, I actually had a partner in crime doing so, and we were doing stuff on a weekly basis, but I don't have that partner in crime anymore. He moved on to greener pastures, literally Portland or somewhere there is about. Um, and otherwise, the most video making I typically do is producing you know, live videos for my band. So, um, I'm going to attempt to force myself to make videos, whether they're just me talking to the camera or something more creative, um, since I have the facilities to do so, but my time is somewhat lacking. And even if it's just getting my thoughts out, um, because I'm not really using my actual blog for that anymore. Um, I mean, I do on occasion, and I'm trying to, again, keep that maintained, but I recently switched over my website to make it a little more portfolio-like. Uh, to bring in hopefully more creative professional work. So, and that's the thing that's been taking a lot of my time. Um, let's talk about a few things like that. First, I'm not sure you guys know, but um, I started a comic book publishing company about two years ago. And um, this is one of the titles that we have. It's an anthology called Omega Comics Presents. And I've been, uh, in addition to editing and publishing the whole thing, uh, also contributing a story to it, and I've been sort of really running myself ragged trying to finish the last part of it. Um, I've been writing and drawing and lettering the whole thing myself. I have actually brought in assistance with this final part of the story uh, in the form of an anchor, the great Victor Moya, who uh, contributed the art for a story in another anthology that we published called Tales from the Boneyard. Which you may have heard about. Um, it's done fairly well locally and we're awaiting word on whether national distribution is coming. Uh, that was a benefit for the Las Vegas Clark County Library District and so far we've already raised about thousand dollars for that. The other comic related thing that's been taking my time um, has been less in the creative end and more on the uh, production promotion end. Uh, the trade paperback collection of my webcomic The Utopian dropped uh, in December is available on Amazon.com. Uh, it's available in comic shops in Las Vegas and whatever. But anyway, this is it. It's got a lovely cover by uh, Hernan Valencia, who is a good friend and also did most of the cover art for the, uh, for the Floppy series. Floppy, that's single comic issues for the non-comic geeks out there. Uh, it's gotten pretty decent reception so far, but I haven't seen any official reviews yet, which honestly I'm completely terrified of. Um, I, I, <laughs> the weird thing with this series is that I never bothered to send out review copies for the most part to uh, all the major comic book websites and publications because I've been very self-conscious about it. It's the first thing I started producing again when I got back into comics uh, about two years ago. And it, it's kind of like if you look at um, a collection of Garfield strips or peanut strips and you know you look at the early ones and they're really raw and the characters don't have their distinctive looks yet and then you know you get a couple years into the strip and these guys find their rhythm well I never found my rhythm but you do see that the art in the beginning is really rough and even the the dialogue and the pacing it takes a little while for it to really catch on. And I think that I'm overall proud with the work, otherwise I would have never collected it in a paperback edi edition. Other people seem to be enjoying it, and I don't know if that's just because they are friends of mine and they're just BSing me, or, you know, if they genuinely like it, uh, but I, I think that as a whole it stands up pretty well. I just don't think that if you took it apart and went the writing, the art, the coloring or lettering or whatever and go, oh, well, these are great things, because they're not. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to focus on this year is just writing. Well, let me rephrase that. Just writing when it comes to comic works and not writing and drawing my own stuff because something suffers, I think. Either the, either the writing is rushed or the art is rushed or just, I don't know. I just feel like it's not the best it can be. 
and I would prefer to put out things that are the best they can be for both you know your guys' sake and for you know my own reputation's sake. So right now I'm working on a few things that either have me drawing someone else's stories or have me writing stories for someone else to draw. And you know the trick with that is when you're a writer and you're writing stuff without basically you're writing on spec. Um, that means you have to have someone draw on spec, which on spec for those outside of any sort of creative industry basically means not on assignment. Um, it's speculative. You send it off and to an editor and hope that they like it. And if they like it, they may publish it. They may not. The problem is, an artist isn't going to work. For, well, a good artist isn't going to work for free um, unless you have a really good relationship with them and established, you know, success. Uh, so that means I have to put out money to pay an artist if I want to get this story up to the quality it needs to be for a successful spec, uh, which you know I'm willing to do and I've been putting off for years. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing my own stuff completely. Uh, I may be working at my own comfortable pace on a sequel to The Utopian, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And that's all I'm going to say about that. On the journalism front, um, I've started writing for Desert Companion, which is Nevada Public Radio's monthly uh, city magazine, basically. It's an award-winning publication edited by an old friend of mine and former friend of me, <laughs> Andrew Corrali. I'll tell you that story if you want in a future video log. I'm sure it'll embarrass both of us. Um, not you and me, but him and me. Um, and this, I'm working on a story for, I think, their March or April issue that has me taking on a fairly physically challenging topic. Um, I'm doing a first-person piece involving a particular form of, uh, I guess, guided fitness slash martial arts. And I don't want to say too much about it because I want it to be a little bit of a surprise when it comes out. And I have no idea how it's going to turn out because this involves me learning something new that I've never done before um, at all, even close to. Group activities aren't really my thing. Uh, the only sports I ever played was soccer for like one season or whatever when I was maybe eight. And I think it's it. Uh, the only other group activity I've ever done have been musically, and those have been okay. So this is something totally different. And if last week was any indication, this article could prove to just make me look like a big giant wuss. But that's Part of the thing is that, you know, if you put yourself on the line for a story, then you've got to tell that story no matter what happens. Still writing for Vegas 7. Uh, I am just finished today an article for, I think, the first issue of February, which was another art story. Um, yeah, I've been writing somewhat infrequently for them. Uh, I've got some stuff coming up for David Magazine also, which is a thinly veiled Jewish lifestyle city magazine based here in Vegas also. Um, I'm really trying to limit my uh, journalistic output to really what I can handle in between the comic stuff. Um, I've been talking to a few people about possibly doing some more illustration work. Again, I'm fine with doing illustration work as long as it's not me illustrating comic stories that I wrote. I know that may not make sense, but believe me there's a dilution you know when I'm creating for someone else I have to produce to their standards and it, that's easier for me to do than being able to take shortcuts and be lazy with my own stuff this last week I, I met with a lot of people and we started discussions about doing a lot of different things and I'm hoping a lot of that comes to fruition and I'm hoping my dogs don't start barking madly in a second here okay they look like they're calm but these little rascals. Who wants who wants to go on camera? Who? This is Sophia. <laughs> She's you smell like Fritos. She smells like Fritos. Um, Rosie's gonna get jealous if she doesn't get up here. Okay, wait. This is Rosie. She smells even more like Fritos. What, do your dogs do that? Do your dogs smell like Fritos when they get like dirty after a while? She needs a haircut and she needs a shampoo. Anyway, um, they like to stand up. We have a doors that have glass windows, sort of like stained glass and. If someone's even walking down the street, across the street, they will bark. Which is, it's great early detection for intruders, but it never works to be intruders. It's always someone a block away. Okay, you can get down now. I know you're happy to be helped, but go away. 
Um, they really stink. I gotta get them clean next week. Uh, we try shampooing them here. It lasts for like five minutes, and then they stink again. I don't know what the deal is. There's something that groomers, professional groomers do that makes dogs at least smell okay for a week. And they're little dogs, and they don't hang out outside that much, but I don't know. This is kind of long. I promise the future ones aren't going to ramble like this. Um, I just feel like I have a lot of info dumping to do. And if you're already reading my blog, then you probably know a lot of this stuff, and I'm sorry. Um, I'm not going to be posting these YouTube videos on my blog or on Facebook or whatever. Um, if you happen to come across them or you happen to be a subscriber, you're going to get them. And I'll be talking about new stuff. And I won't just be talking about myself. It's not going to be a self-promotional vehicle. It just happens to be that the stuff in my life tends to pro involve promotions. Whatever. Um, music. The other channel that I run, the YouTube channel for my band, As Yet Unbroken, has been a little quiet lately. Because we lost a guitar player back in September, October, I don't know. He quit, um, which was only a year after our previous guitar player quit. Um, which obviously has put us somewhat in a weird position again, because we have three of us in the band. Uh, the singer does not play any instruments. Both Mark, the bass player, and myself play a variety of instruments, but I'm the only person that plays drums. And yeah, so it doesn't really work to just jump back into the live thing because we have to bring in another guitarist. We've kind of decided instead of wasting time, well, I don't say wasting, but instead of expending the energy trying to find a replacement full-time guitarist, we decided to kind of take this opportunity, even though we've said it before, we're really doing it this time, sit down, write new songs, record our best stuff, get a CD together, so that we A, have stuff to sell at shows, and B, so that we have something out there that people can decide if they want to even see us at shows. So we've been recording and writing, and it's been great and really productive, and as you can see behind me, stuff's set up. So I recently redid my home studio space so that everything flows. I can easily switch from doing illustration to writing to music production to video production all in one space with one computer, basically, and it's it's pretty sweet. You can't, I'll, I'll give you a virtual tour um, when I'm not using the webcam built in, the eyesight thing, when I'm actually using a flip. I'll give you a tour little virtual thing but there's like printer and scanner and mixers and other sorts of stuff um, so it's been really awesome that we can just kind of get in here and go okay just turn on record and stuff just comes out and it's cool I'll put links to all this stuff there yeah depends on what you're looking at down there I think uh, there'll be links to the band stuff and to the band's YouTube channel to the comic stuff if you're interested in reading it or buying it or making you know, bad comments about it. What's cool is our old guitar player, Rick, has basically agreed to be sort of our on-call guitarist. So when we book shows, um, which we are actually booking a show right now that I'll have more details about soon, but you can probably hear about that on the other channel, the As Yet Unbroken one. He'll come in and basically play, and if there's new songs to be learned, he'll learn them. And it's cool, because we get along with him really well. Um, he just didn't really want to be dedicated to this like whole band thing which was fine uh the three of us worked really well together tim mark and i and um it, you know that kind of thing sort of works it's sort of like having friends with benefits so rick that's what you are you're our um friend with benefit so there you go buddy love you got a beer for you in the fridge for sunday and uh i think that's it i think it's all i'm gonna say right now because I, A, have to get back to finishing these comic book pages, and B, I should really work on those edits on those songs I was talking about, but C, I've talked too much already, In D, uh, there is no D. Oh, the beard. So, in the winter I normally grow a beard, I know winter is a loose term in Las Vegas because right now it's like 70 degrees out or something, even though it'll be back down the 50s next week. Um, but it's scruffier than usual. There's this party coming up this weekend called Wigs and Whiskers or something like that. It's a theme thing, wigs and whiskers. So I have a couple of costume ideas that require the beard to be a certain length, but I'm not sure on the trim yet. That's why it's kind of scruffy. 
Uh, so next time you see me, hopefully I won't be, I either won't be a scruffy or I'll be in my costume. But anyway, I don't want to blow any more hard drive space or waste any more of your time because I see that we're way over the time I planned this to be, which is five minutes or less. It's going to be my future goal, five minutes or less. No more of these 15 minute rambles, which hopefully I'll edit down to far less than that. All right. Fist high, motherfuckers. <laughs>